Hello traders, welcome to another daily analysis. Today is January 30th, right on Monday, we are at 7.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So during the London session, we had the German preliminary CPI, which came out in you know, a less than expected, quite of soft, but still strong than before. So right now, the basically the majority of European nations have been enjoying a very good start in 2017, economically speaking. Uh, so that of course gives Euro a pretty strong sentiment. However, the softer they expected preliminary CPI from Germany today, basically it, it gave ECB another reason to keep their policies. So remember back then, Germany was very opposed on the ECB, ECB's policy. They basically want ECB to stop this low interest rate market, where ECB held completely different views saying that the European basically the market recovered because of the ECB policy. Now of course we don't know if that's true or not, but basically they hold opposite view. And now German has showed this preliminary CPI which kind of soft than expected. It gives ECB more reason to say that hey it's not ready, we are not strong enough, solid enough, we have to keep this kind of low interest rate market. So of course that gave us another confirmation for the picture for the euro, do euro dollar right now it's still a sentimentally strong currency but fundamentally it's still quite quite weak and of course the sentiment will always help euro whenever the US dollar has been sold and the euro, euro US dollar has been sold off today so of course that's going to help uh, euro a little bit the uh, KOF indicator, this is an indicator from Swiss franc, basically it was a negative deviation. So really no surprise, it just gave us an, again more confirmation to say that Swiss franc is in a negative territory. But as mentioned, Swiss franc has no economic news to drive itself. The real catalyst for Swiss franc or Japanese yen uh, has all been largely from the safe haven status. So of course today we have the risk of sentiment that will be benefit Swiss franc and Japanese yen. Now, uh, during the New York session, we had a core PCE personal spending and pending home sales from US. Uh, the data were all came out quite positive or in line with expectations. It just basically really today, if you want to look at the fundamental picture, nothing really changed. The fundamental data of US have once again show a solid pictures. Uh, the Asian station, which we had just now, right now, the Asian station, we had household spending year on year from Japan, which was better than expected, but there was no surprise. The unemployment rate was still the same. Industrial output was a little bit better. Basically, tonight we will have the BOJ decision on the rate and the monetary policy, and widely expectation is everything will be unchanged. Basically, Bank of Japan still has to cap uh, this easing policy. They still have to cap Japanese yen weak. Then especially like today you have this kind of risk of sentiment always help the Japanese yen to surge a little bit which is not what Bank of Japan wants to see. So you know expect uh, whenever you have this kind of surging into Japanese yen if it's too much we will always have a, a possibility of interventions. So really that's what's happening right now the oil market was down today but not much movement basically still trading within the range. Sentimentally, uh, of course, I think many of you know the biggest driver was Donald Trump's executive order on the immigration and visitors to U.S. ban over the weekend. Uh, this again has really no fundamental change, but it has a lot of sentimental panic. Of course, you saw the stock market, equity market, everything dropped, and all the safe haven currency surged for today. So we will. I'll talk more about that later on. But let's just keep going down. And uh, I think the view for global market, it's exactly the same. But as I mentioned, we will always have this kind of sentimental event. So the fundamental pictures for the global market has been quite promising for 2017 compared to last year. You had pretty good fundamental data from European nations. The US fundamental data had been very solid. Even the British pound has been quite solid, fundamentally speaking not to mention New Zealand dollar. And the real driver sentimentally had been quite negative. On the other hand, 
you have this kind of you know executive order from Donald Trump to cause a lot of panic movement for U.S. and global market. You had occasionally the election result or updates, sorry, the election update for European nations, especially France and Germany, to maybe cause some panic. And then you have this kind of global protectionism talks from U.S. and to other nations, which cause some panicking. So that's really the strong momentum to support the market is the fundamental data, and the strong momentum to pressure the market is the sentimental emotions. So that's really the main pictures for U.S. dollar, for Euro dollar, and British pound, and and all other currencies. So nothing has changed from our weekly review. So just expect this kind of momentum really to drive the market, you know, up and down for the day. Now, for U.S. dollar, I I still think it's fundamentally strong, sentimentally neutral, and、uh, neutral means you will have a down day and up day. For example, today because the executive order from Donald Trump, we had a down day. The question is really how long and how large is the sentimental drives, and we all know things will revert back to the fundamental eventually. We just don't know how long. So as a trader, that's really the hard part is because this kind of panic movement can be a great opportunity to buy, but. If you get in right now, it can also be a disaster because you can go lower. We never know what I'm trying to say. We never know how pessimistic or how optimistic the crowd can get. But understand, you can always and only can make big money when the market is extremely happy and extremely sad, right? So that's really what's driving the greed and fear of the market. But How to trade it is always a question of personal choice, and that's really the hardest part. Comes from your own psychology and risk analysis. For euro dollar, as mentioned, same thing. It acts as a counterpart to U.S. dollar because it has no、uh, internal news right now. For British pound, it's exactly the same. The whole thing about Brit exit has died down already. So right now, it's quite neutral. It will react to the U.S. dollar and the global sentiment as well. For Canadian dollar, it's more tricky, right? As I mentioned, it's new show because you have two major forces in oil market. You have a stronger force from OPEC member to support oil market, but you also had a strong force from the shale producer in US to pressure the oil market. So they basically they basically hedge each other out.、Um, more than that, we actually had a terrorist attack in Quebec last night. Now it's not a large event, of course it's not a good event, but it's it's not a large event to drive the market. However. What you want to see for C right now is how Canada will react to this kind of、uh, border protection of U.S. because Canada has been the strongest allies for U.S. and also is closest U.S. neighbor. So if U.S. is really going to completely change the immigration policy, that's going to affect how Canadian react to it. Uh, because the, uh, definitely two nation,、uh, if they act in the same direction, will be better for both nations.、Uh, especially, like I mentioned, they pretty much are close. Just you know, in land wise, geographic wise, they are just beside each other. So that's what it's going to taste for the Canadian、uh, government how they are going to react to the next four years to this immigration policy, and that of course is going to drive Canada. So of course. If we have more and more of this kind of incident of terrorist attack in Canada, we you might have another populist movement come out from Canada.、Uh, it's too early to say, but it's just something too interesting to look forward to from a global view. For Australia and New Zealand dollar, both were pressured today because the current risk of sentiment, but they should still perform well over U.S. dollar and other currency, other than Japanese yen, Swiss franc, because Japanese yen, Swiss franc, of course, both are the winner for today. As the safe haven currency status, so my personal view is this: I think the temporary panic movement will die down very soon, because really look at the big picture. The executive order of immigration. This is not a surprise.、Uh, Donald Trump has been had been saying this kind of slogan all throughout his election that he wants to ban Muslim entering the country. So really, the movement is really not about the surprise. The movement, I think, because of that. Will most likely to die down very soon.
On the other hand, fundamentally, the data has just been very well supported for the U.S. economy. So I do think this will actually be a good chance for a lot of hedge fund traders to buy at a much better level. So I think the market will revert back to the fundamental very soon. The third driver is that if you look in a global picture, the market is down today for equities, but it's not collapsing. It's really not not like you know a huge drop. So you don't really sense that much panic movement. The bond yield, the U.S. bond yield, are virtually unchanged. And as mentioned, the bond traders are always a smart trader from pension fund and large institutional traders. So bond yield are virtually unchanged to sense that you know traders are pretty much still quite confident for the U.S. economy. And the gold was only up for two dollars so if you have a large panicking movement globally you should see gold price jumped but gold was only up two dollar us bond yield are virtually unchanged in the market equity market were down but not collapsing so all the micro view really support in the market is still quite strong and should revert back to a fundamental strong rally very very soon now tonight, the Bank of Japan will release I think, uh, the decision, which will again largely expect to be unchanged. That's actually the fourth driver, because Japan right now has to keep Japanese yen weak. So the fourth driver for U.S. dollar will be the Japanese government, as they keep devaluing their own currency, will providing to be another strong support for U.S. dollar. So that's my personal view. I might be wrong, but I do think. The market will revert back to buying US dollar very, very soon, and we will have a risk on sentiment very, very soon. Of course, we don't know what's going to pan out for the, the world, and nobody knows the future. But as what I saw, at least for now, from the micro picture perspective, I think the market is still quite confident in uh, buying US dollar or in buying stock uh, in general. So let's take a look at our chart. Uh, so first thing first, my current trade dollar yen, of course, had a bit drawdown as mentioned but we are look at that still within the range still within this box of 115 to 11225 or 11250 so as long as we are still within the range my personal view of course if you gotta you have the zoom out is still from this rally ever since donald trump got elected we are still in uptrend and right now it can very well be a, a sort of mid mid range movement and tonight, Bank of Japan will again provide another catalyst for dollar yen. For me, I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm not going to tighten my stop loss, nor am I going to exit or anything, because my fundamental view is still looking upside. Uh, my risk, of course, is to get whipsaw, because I never know how large the sentiment drive. So if I get whipsaw, you know, it is what it is. I will looking forward <coughs> to getting again at maybe 110 or 111 level. So that's my view for dollar yen. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you look at new yen, it's my second trade. And uh, again, you do have this kind of bearish big shadow. But looking at that, this this uh, basically resistant has turned into support. So again, it just shows me we are really still in fundamental strength for New Zealand dollar. Everything is still looking upward. Again, Bank of Japan will be a catalyst later on, but my fundamental view is still the same. Therefore, I'm not moving anything at all because I don't want to get whipsaw, you know, just to see it get back in. So what's holding my view is the fundamental strength. So I'm still holding it unless something materialistically change for the picture. Otherwise, I'm holding my two Japanese yen trip. And let's keep going. Your newsy is my third trade. Uh, we actually not only broke through 1.47, we actually closed below 1.47. So this is quite significant, right? It just shows you right how strong New Zealand dollar is and how weak Euro dollar is. So it is a quite significant movement. And uh, so I really don't have any reason to do anything about this besides just keep holding it. Now, if you look at euro, since we are the euro already, let's take a look at euro dollar. So euro dollar today, yes, it has a nice kangaroo tail, but if you look at it, it's virtually unchanged. You are still within the 1.08 and 1.06. It's still within this 200 pips range. Nothing really changed. And 
if euro is really strong you should really see a green candle today or you should see a much stronger movement because euro is also a part of safe haven currency but if you look at dollar yen it's a nice down day if you like dollar swiss it's another huge down day so euro dollar did not react as strong as other safe haven currency and that just shows you that although the european nation has been recovered but because of the ecb policy people are still looking to sell it fundamentally today germany had released a softer than expected cpi number which once again makes ecb have more reason to hold their policy because of that i am still looking to sell euro dollar whenever we had a, a good uh, signal at this level which we had last thursday but be, did not fail so i cancel it which is a great strategy for me personally because then you avoid this kind of whipsaw and that's you know what i do all the time if it does not get filled the second day i do i don't think it has enough momentum so for me i always cancel it so let's take a look at our 28 pairs just give me one second okay so euro pound euro pound really it's a, it's a small update for euro dollar but really nothing much going on euro swiss it's a huge down day and again it just shows you how strong or how weak euro dollar is because if you look at euro swiss it's such a huge bearish uh, engulfing candle but if you look at dollar swiss it's also a large bearish candle but it's not an engulfing it actually is trying to go up and goes down so just by looking at technical chart itself you know it just shows you shows you that euro has a much weaker momentum right now dollar swiss also you have to be careful because you are right above this 200 day moving average which providing will be a very strong support so again i do think the risk sentiment will revert back very very soon back to the fundamentals so we might actually get in at a very nice attractive level at here to buy So going back to see euro swiss you'll see that it's such a huge momentum for swiss franc and uh, of course this is not good enough for me to short it because they both are weak uh, currency on my plate so i'm not looking to get into it euro dollar as mentioned something i'm looking forward to short providing if i have any any daily signal euro aussie it's also something I'm not looking to do anything about it because they both are quite weak, fundamentally speaking. EuroCAD, also it's a range bound today. Euro is something looking to short, which I'm already in, so just keep go going to hold it. Uh, Euro Yen again has a huge down day. Pound Swiss franc, a down day today for cable as well, I think. So British pound really not much catalyst to drive it. It's really just reacting to whatever happened to the global market. But as mentioned, a lot of people are always looking to short cable at this kind of level 1.27. So this is always a zone for short to get in. But whenever you are, sorry about that. It's always a zone. But whenever you are at this kind of 1.225, you always have buyers. So basically, we had been traveling basically through October last year in this kind of, you know, 1.2250 to 1.27. This 500 pips of movement is where we currently at. We don't really have any future catalyst to drive British pound anywhere. So what's really going to drive it will be a technical labels because internally, yes, we have the parliament debate in February but really i don't think that's gonna be a big driver it's just more like a political drama so what's going to drive british pound at least for this week will much likely be a technical uh, levels so for technical levels then whenever it goes to 1.2738 this will be an area or 1.25 or 26 these are all good zone to sell and as mentioned, we'll force down to 1.23 or 2250 will be a good area to buy. That's what's going to drive British pump, basically. 
out. Pang Aussie, same thing. What's going to drive it for it for this week will most likely be the technical labels. Pang Cat. So Pang Cat, you know, uh, if you look at a technical label, it's of course nice to sell. You you are at the right level. You do have a nice bearish engulfing. Uh, the only thing that I don't want to get into again, I don't have any particularly strength into Canadian dollars, so I don't want to get into it. Just the probability is just really low for me. Pound New Zealand, of course, will be something I'm much more likely to sell. Unfortunately, I don't have any signal here. So if I have any catalyst to to drive it during the intraday trade, I will very much like to sell Pound New Zealand or cable. Pang Yen again, huge drop today because of the sentiment drive. This is this is not good enough for me to sell because again tomorrow if the risk sentiment uh, change, then we will see another drive into Pang Yen to drive it up. Swiss franc, Japanese yen, really nothing to talk about in this currency. Dollar Swiss. Uh, although we had this down movement, I'm actually looking forward to buying to it if we have a better sentiment. Uh, dollar cat is exactly the same picture I'm looking to buy. And dollar yen, I'm also looking to buy, but I'm already in already. So I will see what happened, whether 11250 can hold it. And also what happened to, you know, hours later, we will have Bank of Japan. Catalyst, it might drive the dollar yen up. Because you just think about it, you have a down day today because of the sentiment from Donald Trump. So if Bank of Japan uh, released their policy as expected, which is they kept everything on change, and they are probably not going to have a, a such hawkish tone because right now uh, Prime Minister Abe is going to meet with Donald Trump, uh, I think, in, in, in 10 days. So right now everything's up in the air because the protectionism will hurt Japan as well. Japan really rely heavily on their export business. So that will really uh, be a catalyst for Japan. So of course they are not going to paint it such a promising picture. They are not going to say, oh, we're going to stop easing. We're going to tapering very soon. No, they're going to keep make sh making sure uh, their currency is in an attractive level for their exporters. So that's why I think later on the catalyst might providing a quite good sentiment to drive the US dollar. Uh, but nevertheless, we don't know what's going to happen. So that's why we have a stop loss all the time. I'll see. Sorry, I'll see. I'll see Swiss. Not much going on today. Uh, Australian dollar, as mentioned, is still quite strong sentimentally speaking. I'll see dollar again. Not much going on here. I'll see cat. I'll see New Z is something we were looking to sell in our daily chart, uh, sorry, in our weekly chart. Uh, but of course, if we have something that's better to rally at 1.04 or 0.5, this will be a very nice pair to short. Uh, this week, we do have the employment data from New Zealand. That will be a catalyst. If the New Zealand can continue its strengths fundamentally, then it will really be a very strong currency to get into it. I was saying that weekly chart, we do have this kind of bearish engulfing candle. Uh, the only thing to be careful is this is really $1 is the all time low. So you're really not much far away from it. So of course, if you can find a much attractive level in the daily chart, uh, that would be a good chance to sell or even in the intraday chart. But we have to see what happened to the employment data from New Zealand for the Tuesday. I'll see Yen. It's a down day today, and it's fantastic. We got out at a high, basically. We got out at 87 uh, on Friday, which is great. And this is really something, you know, basically how you trade in a micro perspective. Also getting the help from the technical chart, because I got out last Friday for a very simple reason. As I mentioned, the sentiment might shift over the weekend, and it did shift over the weekend, but technically, you had one touch, two touch, three touch. Yes, you might go up, but you also might go down. Whatever, whatever it might, uh, all this scenario might happen, right? When I using technical uh, chart, it's not to predict in the future at all. All right, nobody can predict the future. It's just to tell me there's a resistance here. So whenever resistance, market might react. So then it comes down to my own uh, psychology or risk analysis. If I'm fine to 
to face this kind of reaction or if I'm not fine about it. So for me to miss some money on the table versus losing the unrealized profit, that really depends on your own psychological levels and like how do you deal with this? Because they both are not good, of course. You know, one is that you leave money on the table. The other one is that you you lose the unrealized profit. They both are kind of psychological pain for me. So it really depends on which one is more painful or which one is less painful. That will be the route I choose. Uh, Cash Swiss, not much going on in this pair, you know, fundamentally speaking. Cat Yen, uh, down day today for all the Japanese Yen pair. New Z Swiss, New Z Dollar, New Z Dollar, uh, looking at it, it's actually not bad. I mean, I do think this might be a good chance to loan New Z Dollar. The only thing I don't like is because we don't have any space at all. So this might just drive in by the dollar weakness. But if you're looking at few candles price, this is actually right now we have this insider candle, right? So this insider candle will actually not be a bad technical entry. So you could get into at uh, this insider candle to loan New Z dollar. Right now, the only thing is I'm already in New Zealand dollar with 1%. So I don't want to get into any New Z trade for now, unless because then I will be overexposed in New Zealand. And also tomorrow or Wednesday, we will have the employment data. I don't want to get into any New Zealand dollar trade right now. I want to get into after that employment data. So we have to see and I have to wait. That's just the way I trade it. It's very conservative. You can, of course, trade in any way you like. If you want to take advantage and get into New Zealand dollar loan, you could because dollar might still suffer a risk of sentiment for tomorrow. I do think the risk sentiment will change, but it might continue for a couple of days. So we'll have to see. And if that continue, then New Zealand dollar will be stronger than US dollar. New Zealand cat. Uh, last nothing here and uh, New Zealand yen again. That's the one we are in right now. So New Zealand dollar again. This is quite. If you are not in any New Zealand trade, New Zealand dollar might be a good one to get in because if the risk sentiment shift tomorrow, that will help New Zealand dollar and Australian dollar as well. If the risk sentiment continue, because again this risk sentiment is largely from the U.S. itself. So if the sentiment continue, it will continue to pressure U.S. dollar then the New Zealand dollar will keep going up. So that's why if you get into this trade, you basically take out the risk from the sentiment because no matter what happened, the US dollar will be, uh, New Zealand dollar will be benefit. If you have a risk of sentiment, yes, New Zealand dollar will be pressure, but the US dollar will be pressure even more because the sentiment basically came from the US policy. If you have However, a risk on sentiment that will help, that will shift the US dollar, but that will also shift the New Zealand dollar. So New Zealand dollar will also be stronger. So in any way, New Zealand dollar will be stronger than US dollar for the next few days. That's why this might be a good trade to get into it, providing you have a kangaroo tail, but you also have an inside candle. For me, if I want to do it, I will put, I will use the insider candle. It's just much safer to do it, right? So I will use the insider candle as a trade. So that's it guys. Uh, I don't have anything other than this. Tomorrow, I think, hold, hold on a second. Let me take a look at what's gonna happen tomorrow. So this was our weekly outlook from yesterday. Let's see what happened tomorrow. Tomorrow is February, uh, sorry, January 31st. So right at today, we will have a BOJ policy rate target, which announced and then the press conference is coming out after the midnight. So it's tomorrow. This will give us more direction for Japanese yen. Then the ECB Draghi will speak. They have a CPI flash estimate. This again will give more confirmation to ECB to hold their policy, I think, because I think Draghi is quite strong in his stance. So most likely uh, ECB is going to keep their easing policy and they are going to I mean they're going to re-emphasize it you have a core CPI CPI flash preliminary GDP so this will be a much European play for euro dollar 
Then you have the GDP from Canada. Will be this will be a tradable event for me personally. I I like to trade. I'm probably not going to trade Europe because it's really nothing unless I have a huge uh, upset that I can short Euro dollar. But really depend on what happened to Bank of Japan's direction first. Then in New York session, New York session we have the GDP from Canada, which is definitely tradable. If we have a deviation, you can either short it or buy it. Which pair to choose? Again, it depends on what happened to the global market. We have to see later on. Then finally, you have the employment data. This is also tradable. I really do hope this come out as positive, but because then New Zealand dollar will really be a sure thing that I can get into. I can basically take more risk on the New Zealand dollar if we have a better uh, uh, employment data. Let me see if we have a expected number right now. Okay, I still don't have the expected number on my routers. So if I don't have an expected number, then I'm not able to trade it uh, as a catalyst. But I am going to trade it as a fundamental picture. So as long as some, somehow it came out positive, I will try to get into New Zealand dollar trade, maybe with Aussie New Z weekly chart or maybe daily chart. I'm also might just again get into this uh, New Zealand dollar trade tomorrow. If I have a good New Zealand dollar data, I might just use this insider. If we still trade within the range, I might just use the insider candle to get into it. Uh, that's my plan. So that's what's gonna happen then. At Asian station, you will have manufactured data from China. So this will be a catalyst spend many for Australian dollars. So maybe will be again if again the scenario if you have a good New Zealand dollar employment data, and you have a good or you have a bad Chinese data, or soft than expected, you could use that to short Aussie New Zealand. So it's just something to have in mind. So that's gonna what's gonna happen tomorrow, and uh, we'll see what happened tonight later on from the Bank of Japan, which is really again expected to be unchanged. And if you wanna trade any of the Japanese yen catalyst, the best pair to choose is always dollar yen because it has the largest range. Uh, Euro yen is not bad, and pound yen actually have an even larger range than dollar yen. So. If you want to do intraday trade, Pang Yen is even much better because the range is very large. But if you want to hold something that's more like days, week, then Dollar Yen will be good. Dollar Yen is also has a good signal on weekly chart. As I mentioned already, this kangaroo tail. So this might be a good signal to get into for weekly perspective as well. But nevertheless, we'll see what happened later on to Japanese to Bank of Japan. And then we will have a clear direction. So that's it guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another daily analysis. Uh, if you have any question or you find this video helpful, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.